Hey yo, what is up guys? It's your boy Twey here and this will be a video on the what I would say the most challenging thing that recently came out which is the fifth floor onto the Royal Underground Labyrinth on all of the difficulties. So I'll be going over every single one of them, sharing my tactics on how to actually do it and with what I would say a very much like budget like team. Now little disclaimer I'm using chase he has a five-star unique weapon and a three-star unique treasure and that gets me most of the wins combined with a happy pumpkin because with that he is an absolute monster right here so let's get into it we got ourselves the defense floor and the tactic that I used or came up with was the only tank tactic now for this floor all of your HP is buffed when you pull a tank over there which is amazing what I combined this with was obviously a Sonya, which kills amazingly with HP because, well, her T5 dart has chances to proc hits that exponentially rise with more HP. Same thing goes for Philip, which is amazing as well. And if you get all perks into HP, you get even more HP with the, uh, the T2 perk. Another thing that I would note is I use every single one of my characters with a little bit of lifesteal. This allows all of these characters to survive on their own. Now, Philip has his own onto S3 where he can just simply uh, heal himself up by just a little and that makes him a very good tank. The reason why I chose Mora to be there is for her block and her block only. If she gets like zoned out, from the banish she is not like a character that was supposed to do a lot and a lot of damage and a lot of tank so I'd rather pick Philip instead so he can actually amp up and survive everything for the rest of the team with the highest attack shred within the game so to me this team was the most functional and actually if you look at it aside from Sonya almost dying a few times would be probably the best case for this whole team There you have it folks, a nice and clean, just a kill, but uh, let's get over to some of my gear. <clears throat> so here will be my gear stats, and like I said, a little bit on the lifesteal, I actually changed up the penetration room for this very reason, to simply just change up the survivability of my whole team. Same goes for Philip, and same goes for practically every single one of my characters. Now I do have a little bit of uptime onto like crown, got an achievement, a reward, so I got some gear extra. All right, up next, the warrior floor. This one to me was one of the easiest ones because obviously I have my chase which does an enormous amount of damage. I picked, you know, Chase, Gao into Sonya because of their stuns. Now Gao and Sonya, in terms of stunning, are amazing with uh, shock on Sonya, amplifying all sorts of stuns within my whole team. I actually don't need a Mei, which leads me to picking you know for obvious reasons, more heal, more damage, more P defense, shred. So could you pick a Mei on this team? Obviously yes. But in terms of healing, I would say Yuno know, is way, way better. Now onto S3 Dark on Chase. I actually picked a little bit of extra stun just to make sure that I'm doing enough damage to provide and just get this kill in. So once again, you can see the ease and where I'm using these stuns.
Alrighty, that's it. So for gear, I would say this one is pretty solid. Tried this with Philip, but it wasn't doable. So this, so what I'm currently using is a Uno. You know, this could easily be replaced for a a May, for instance, would be great as well. Uh, but the stunning itself can be a little bit off. Now my chase is obviously god tier, um, especially with this. Went for the extra stun on the perk. Goss speaks for itself. I got absolutely no gear on him, so he's actually not that great. Uh, aside from that, nothing much there. And I got a very good Sonya that is able to tank and provide me with shock, so extra damage as well. So that's about it. Alrighty, on to the next, which would be the assassin floor. I'm actually not using any good assassins. Roy has no unique weapon, no unique treasure. Erzi has simply just two star unique weapon but she's only good at AOE damage so she's not contributing whatsoever and guess what using chase again now this guy is an absolute monster in this stage for one reason and one reason only consistent damage now I've used to do this with a Miriana and an Epis with respectively a three star and a four star and they were all having spike damage could I auto it no now with this team Actually, I was not able to auto it, but then again, I took a Gladi instead of Urzi later on, and it worked even better. Because also Gladi has a lot and a lot of consistent damage. Now take note. My chase has full Manticore set, 5 star unique weapon, 3 star unique treasure, and he has a two-star goblin mask which allow him to survive just about anything he doesn't even get popped out of his head too which allow the damage to even amp up even more okay so i had to time this last part off perfectly because i waited with the you know s3 or s1 hell to get the debuff off otherwise i wouldn't have made it now the gear that i'm using is absolutely insane uh because both of my characters were absolute ass right there but because my chase is an absolute monster he just murders this stage so this is what the gear looks like so this is you know right there maximum debuff Lots of targeting, which is great. We got Erzi on absolutely no gear whatsoever. Got a unique weapon, but she's not doing any damage. Now, this is my Roy. <laughs> Makes no sense. Uh, the only thing that makes sense is the um, uh, S1 Dark and the Vital Detection. Now, I could... Oh, I could actually not pick like more than just one. So he was not doing any damage. Like he has <laughs> 44k attack, but it still works, right? So that was my team. Alrighty, now what would be to me the hardest stage because I have absolutely no decent archers. Now my Yana is actually on T5, no unique weapon, Dimayal is even on T2, so I'm not even sure what he's doing in my team. I don't have anything good here. Once again, this is just a showcase of how much of a monster Chase is. I've had to redo this a lot and a lot of time for uh, luck purposes, and I'm actually clearing this on a high luck note as well. But could I do this consistently every single time? I would definitely say yes i was trying to do this with cecilia onto a four star unique weapon and unique treasure but that actually proved to be even less consistent so first off just killing about everything getting through the first three stages very easily the only thing that you want is kill this as fast as possible and keep your philip as alive as possible as well the reason why i pick philip obviously the shred but also for the very last part which is the Elrose boss now once she starts actually summoning these uh, elves she start doing what I would call the spirit bomb and the only way to survive this with high ease is simply having CC immunity and obviously CC immunity applies to chase and guess what 
Chase gets hit, does not get killed. Philip gets hit, does not get killed. What do the things do in the back? Absolutely jack shit. So this is actually looking very, very good. I was trying to actually use my S3 to pop a little bit behind and see if I can get my chase to reposition to kill the Dark Elves. But to me, this was a very, very high risk. So I did not even do it all that much. So coming up would be the highest lucky factor. My S3 actually ran out onto my Philip. Cooldown was a little bit too high for him to survive. But we got a little bit of HP left to get it popping. Another Spirit Bomb did not kill him, but yeah, the Dark Elves at the back actually do some damage. Chase losing his S2, thinking for me to die, nearly killing. Oh my god, this was, this was close beyond repair. This was absolutely insane. And this took me about 30 minutes of trying this out. Now as for the gear and stats here, so we're at, oh, I even, I even forgot the gem for her. Absolutely nothing. Got the crown, got the whip, so that's providing with the damage. Now Philip is here just to survive just about anything. And guess what? My chase obviously being an absolute monster, but using tactical foresight to reduce my damage even further so I could survive just about any damage. And that is it. Alrighty, and this would be the only stage a mechanic that I will be showing off Cecilia, my main lady, the lady that puts boots to asses. So this is, to me, one of the most fun stages to just showcase her. Now, she's currently on a four-star unique weapon and unique treasure, so she can definitely do something. Now, Audi really compliments her in terms of charging up her S3 unique treasure, which allows her to do a lot and a lot of damage. And what I would say within this mechanic would be kill this guy as fast as possible because, from what I can see, he exponentially does more damage while this fight even prolongs. Now every single time that he charges up, he has this pyramid where he cannot be CC'd and he will be doing a lot and a lot of damage. Now I'm thinking that with the repositioning that Cecilia does, that she does not get hit, but don't take my word for it because I do from time to time get one shot within the stage. So yeah, only tactic, put boots and ass, lots of damage, Get Claws up there because he has the biggest P defense amp and also probably one of the highest uh, shreds if you do block with him. There we go. Okay, so this one is not consistent, but it is working out. Backline. So what I'm using right here, once again, you know, same stats as usual. Audi on a two-star with the Infernal Whip. Now, Cecilia was the one that required like the highest investment. And this is the perks that I put her on. Uh, what could potentially work as well for higher burst damage is the childhood memory. But since you're prolonging uh, your time of fighting, you can actually um, set up this treasure uh, in terms of Audi's reset as well. So I think, in all honesty, that uh, Moment of Respite would be the best of that. For my Claws, I actually don't have anything good to him except like this could work with some higher defense boost But then again like from time to time Cecilia just gets one shot So I was thinking like either get more damage faster damage and get more consistency out of that But yeah, that's just about it No, 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 don't die with this.
right now to me what would be the hardest run within my current gear set if you got a good air z the fifth one is easy as it can be but as you saw just earlier that stuff happened more than just once because air z is really hard to clear out the final parts of the boss now what i'm using is veronica into esker and what I was trying is get Veronica as tanky as possible and do a little bit of the same with Esker. Get a lot of P dodge on him so he could actually survive this whole run. Now this was the only and the very first run after 50 minutes of trying this. So to some extent it is all about consistency and just persistency as well. Now Esker, once he gets started, if he does get his S3 up to the lowest cooldown possible, he can just survive a nuclear blast. The reason for him to survive just about anything would be his passive as well, which allow him to, on every stack, get about 2 to 2.5k extra all defense, which is great. Now, there's nothing really happening aside from me doing... Uh, some boo-boos here and there on my RC, just lowering the damage. But the main question I had earlier was how do I complete this and how do I survive? How do I get the right tank for this? And to me, Nyla just provides everything that is necessary because one of the hardest parts of using an RC is getting the transition of S3 once it's not up that means that she's vulnerable for just a little bit now having the s2 of nyla provides with 250 p dodge which allow you to survive most of that another thing that i want to note is how do you clear stage four now stage four has this annoying gimmick where you cannot buff any of your characters that means that esker is useless Erzy is useless, and Nyla doesn't provide a whole lot. Now, I tried doing this with Visca, not possible at all. Would Artemia be good here? I don't know. I don't even own her yet. So, I used, once again, my main man, Chase. Now, Chase has insane, insane damage. So, I put Book of the Mad 3 star on him, and he could survive along Nyla. And the only downside was there is... How do you breach the amount of ads that are coming up? Now, if you use Nyla's S1, she will be jumping back and forth to all sorts of enemies. Now, if she jumps to one of the eggs, the spawn that comes from that will actually be attracted to Nyla. So, change only has to kill half of it. Half of the monsters. And then, repositioning with uh, one of his skills allows him to get wherever he's needed now i will be making a video on this like on its own but it is very very hard to reproduce even with my current gear now nothing is really happening once again but this is just to show how much of a luck factor this still is esker is not doing any damage because yeah no real amp and no real damage gear that means that the last few seconds is all down to having gear. If Erzy by any chance would have a 3 star on a weapon, this would never be as much of a problem as it was. Would I invest into her just because of this? Hell no. I made this work, babe. I made this work. Look at me being happy and shit. Alright, as for gear, now the main thing that I use on Veronica is just to get the feather off, doing a little bit more damage. Achievement onto Esker with some P dodge, not even a whole lot, but just enough to get him to survive. Urzi, just a 2 star and 0 star on the unique treasure, so this is absolutely not good. And here we got the main lady that survives just about anything in this stage, which would be Nyla. And having a crown on her allows me to do extra damage. Alright, as for the last stage, the healer stage. Popping once again, my man 100 grand. Chase tanking about anything that he's vomiting out of his ass. So, I got himself the happy pumpkin. And happy pumpkin is probably made for Chase. Chase heals up like a gazillion while using it. 
So that allows him to tank just about anything. Would you be able to use any other tanks? Obviously, yes. And I would pick, for instance, Jane because she has a lot of uh, self-regulating heal as well. But for the other picks, Refi into Shay, into Yuno, and this is a very, very easy pick. Refi being a very solid heal, doesn't get dispelled, and even on lowest investment does a very high amount of healing. Now, Shay can do a lot of healing uh, depending on her unique weapon, but I think that the way that I use her could actually be done onto a very low unique weapon as well what i'm doing basically is use the s1 first get the healing off like usual and roll with the total heal not changing it up for the extra cooldown and the same is being done for s2 now s2 if all of your teammates have the maximum amount of mana will also heal which is absolutely great as for you know, I just even like click whatever heal that I can find, every shield that I can find. This one I actually completed within one go. This was easy. All right. As for the gear, what I want to give is uh, one big tip: don't get a lot of HP because the damage that is being dealt is percentual based for what I can tell. So get the lowest amount of HP, you can get some defense, but if you get high attack on all of your healers, that would mean percentual wise you would do even more heals. I could be wrong on this, but that would be one of my tips. So yeah, that basically concludes all of the Royal Underground Labyrinth runs. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you have any questions, which should pop up make sure to put them down into the comments i will be answering each and every one of your questions once again have a very nice day peace